walk you through using our Breaking Ground Senior Digital Backdrop. So we've got our backdrop open here. I've also got my senior already extracted from its background here. So what we'll do is make sure we have our Move tool selected. You want to click on your subject, move it up to your Digital Background tab, bring it down onto the canvas, and drop it right in. Now you can sort of move your um, move your subject where you think it sort of fits best in here. I think probably right there is pretty good. Um, if you need to scale your image, you can do Edit, Transform, Scale. You'll want to hold down your Shift key while grabbing any one of these four corners and that will allow you to scale this proportionally without distorting your image. Um, alternately, some people do have a hard time using that. Um, so if you come right up here, um, you have a maintain aspect ratio. You can just click on that little button and that will make sure that your image um, is scaled proportionally. So we can go ahead and hit enter on our keyboard and that will go ahead and set the scale. Now the next thing we're going to want to do, um, first of all, let's get this in the right position. We want this to be just above the layer named your photo here. Next what we want to do is we want to put a ground shadow on here. So we're going to create a selection of um, our subject. So if we hold down our control key or command on a Mac, and click on the layer, that's going to create a selection here. Now let's go click on our ground shadow layer and let's fill that with black. Edit, fill, and let's drop this down, choose black, select OK. So now what we've got is our shadow um, and it's in this exact selection here. What we want to do is we want to distort this and sort of throw the shadow off a little bit um, to sort of mimic how it would look um, based on where the lighting is. So we're going to edit, transform, and we're going to distort this. Now you're going to get the same bounding box that you got before when we um, transformed your image. You made it a little bit bigger, but this time we're going to grab in uh, any one of these little nodules right here. Um, I like to start from the top. Now since we have our light sort of coming from this area, um, we want our shadow to sort of follow that. So I'm going to distort it and just sort of have, have it look um, how, how the light might cast that shadow. And I think that's pretty good right there. So I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. And that, again, will set that. Um, now we're going to deselect. So you can do Control or Command D on your keyboard, and that will remove the dancing ants from around there. Now the next thing we want to do um, to make this a believable shadow is we want to sort of blur the edges somewhat. So we're going to come up under Filter. We're going to select a blur, Gaussian Blur. And you can set that to your taste. Um, I've got it set on about 26 here. I, I think that's pretty good. Uh, maybe we could even go up just a little bit. Let's, let's put it up to 30 just to make it an even number. Um, and then the last thing we want to do to make this a more convincing shadow is we want to, we want to sort of trail this off um, into transparent pixels where the shadow here would be um, a a harsher shadow, but it would trail off into transparent pixels. Now in order to do that, we're going to click into the mask layer of our ground shadow. We're going to grab our gradient tool. We're going to come up and click on the gradient toolbox, and what we want to choose is um, foreground to transparent. We're going to click OK. Now we want to make sure our foreground color is black which it is. And so the transparent pixels 
we want um, we want the transparent pixels to be here. So we want that black to be up here. That's going to make it transparent. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start here. I'm going to hold down my shift key because I want it to um, go straight down. And I'm just going to go maybe here to here and let that ramp down and see how that looks. And you can see that's actually pretty good right there. And you'll notice in the mask layer, we went from black to transparent. And that's how we get that. Now, if you think you want maybe a little bit more transparency, maybe that's a little too much for you, you could ramp it again. So just hold it down and maybe do a shorter one this time. And that looks, that looks pretty good. Now, you also have the option to adjust this shadow layer. Um, we've got the fill set to 50. You can um, raise that up or bring that down. Again, that's pretty much just to suit your taste. But um, I think I'll leave it right at about 50. Now, the last piece of this is a blending layer that we've created for you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this blending layer on. What we want to do is we want to help just add some subtle tones from the digital backdrop um, to better match your subject to, to the composition. But we only want it to affect your subject. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it on, and you'll see how that sort of affected the entire thing. What we want to do is we want to clip that blending layer to your cutout photo. So all you need to do is right click, create a clipping mask, and you'll see that it just took those subtle tones from your composition and added it only to your subject. So if we turn it off, you'll see that was your original, and then we'll turn it back on, and you'll see how it picked up the tones from the composition. And again, that helps to better uh, match your subject to the composition. Mm -hmm.